Dear students, welcome to our class on Crop Physiological Concepts in Agricultural Meteorology. See, Agricultural Meteorology by definition study of those aspects of meteorology, study of those aspects of meteorology that have direct relevance to agriculture. So, when we, the agrometeorologists, are interested to know the crop responses to solar radiation, temperature, humid <coughs> pressure, wind, all these things. One of the main subjects who usually take an uh, optional subject you know, is one of the uh, most important optional subjects we take is crop physiology. That doesn't mean that we don't take soil science. Okay? Soil science is a topic. So many sciences are there. However, the crop physiological concepts, you know, how they are useful in agricultural meteorology, is uh, very uh, important for us to know. Now, first let us see what is the thermoperiodism. Now, see by definition, thermoperiodism is a phenomenon in which growth or development is promoted by altering day and night temperature. Say for example, <coughs> the growth of a crop, the growth of a plant is promoted by altering day and night temperatures. Why? Because it is again, once again, uh, a definition, once again I will tell, uh, in a different form, the sum of responses, especially of a plant, the sum of responses, especially of a plant to appropriately fluctuating temperatures, morning, 7 o'clock, okay, the temperature may be 20, by afternoon, the temperature may be 28, by evening, from 28, it reduces to 26, by night, it reduces to, say, around, say, uh, around 21, by next day, early morning, again, it may be plus or minus 1 to 20 degrees centigrade yesterday okay like that so the sum of responses especially of a plant to appropriately fluctuating temperatures is known as thermoperiodism thermoperiodism now again the response of a crop plant to cycles in temperature fluctuations what are the cycles of day and night even during the day there is a possibility for fluctuations in temperature so here we should understand a term photo period the relationship between temperature and plant growth and development involving both day and night temperatures we call it as the thermo period usually <coughs> our we the agrometeorologists take a photo period as a 24 hours day and night so therefore a temperature impact Finally, what is thermoperiodism? The temperature impact on plants, the temperature impact on crop plants, where plants grow better at the alternating day and night temperatures rather than at the constant temperature. So even though we raise the crops, even in the greenhouses nowadays, okay, protected cultivation, okay, so day and night temperatures are, we can say in 24 hours, we go on changing the temperatures. So therefore, so thermoperiodicity is a characteristic of a plant to exhibit its behavior with reference to variations in air temperature because of differences in exposure to day light night dark periods okay this is what we call it as a thermoperiodism its implications in everything in the classes in the days to come we try to understand now uh, uh, an interesting thing what are the cardinal temperatures the second one is the cardinal temperatures see first uh, in the meteorology, you know, there are cardinal points that you should not confuse yourself with the cardinal points. So what are the cardinal points? East, west, south, north, we take it as the main. That they are the cardinal points. Now, so cardinal, most of the students when they write the exams, you know, so in the basics, they write the cardinal points, cardinal temperatures, you know. So those cardinal directions they will take. Sometimes I observe, so only to avoid confusion. And the basics, okay, these are all the basics only. Now, so... Uh, what is the cardinal temperature okay <clears throat> regardless of uh, how favorable light and moisture conditions may be however good may be the light or however good may be the moisture conditions uh, plant growth ceases uh, when air and uh, leaf temperatures uh, drops below a certain minimum below a certain minimum temperature okay the crop growth and development ceases 
or exceeds a certain minimum value. When it exceeds a certain minimum value also, the crop growth and development ceases. So between these two limits, the minimum and maximum limits, uh, there is an optimum temperature at which growth proceeds with the uh, greatest periodicity. Okay, so plant growth uh, go on, go on increasing with the greatest uh, rapidity. Otherwise, you know, we can say it has greatest rapid optimum. So these three temperatures points uh, are the cardinal temperatures for a given crop. Say, for example, cool season crops in general. For minimum 0 to 5 for germination, 25 to 34 for optimum, maximum 31 to 31, 37 degrees centigrade. Say for example, what are the cool season crops in uh, tropical countries, you know, wheat, barley, okay, temperate countries, these are the things. So, so cardinal temperatures, the minimum, the optimum and maximum temperatures for the growth of a plant are gone, plant are gone, okay, or whole of a crop, okay, the cardinal temperatures uh, vary depending upon the uh, season. So this is what uh, is the uh, cardinal temperature. So then we straight go, we straight away go to what is Van Hoff's law. See, Van Hoff uh, is a wonderful scientist, which uh, okay, you know, the agrometrologist should always honor crop physiologists, what are physicists, chemists, what are every science Q10 rule is there. What is that Van Hoff law or Q10 law? See, what uh, Van Hoff said is that. The rate of response of uh, a process in a crop plant, say for example, this you take it as a crop plant. The rate of response of a process, what is the process? Uh, say photosynthesis, dry matter production, respiration, or you can say uh, photo, or what, so or enzymatic reactions, what are all these things, uh, okay, in a crop plant is often doubled or more for each increase of. 10 degrees centigrade, okay, for every 10 degrees centigrade, 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, however, within certain limits, okay, the condition is within certain limits, Van Hoff's law, once again for your academic interest, it is a physical law, it is a chemical law, it is a, it is a crop physiology law, which we apply to agriculture metrologists, so that's why agriculture metrologists are supposed to learn everything based on the, okay, physics and Okay, physics and geography we, we are the basis of crop physiology is how we should understand as a agrometrologist. Once again, for your academic interest, I would like to say that the uh, Q10 rule is the only a general rule. It is a general rule. That's what I told. Physicists, chemists, chemist, uh, chemists, all these things, you know, which may hold good for only under certain environmental conditions as far as our crop plants are concerned. The rule of 10 also we call it as the rule of 10. Q10 means of temperature coefficient is a it is a unit unit less quantity. It is a unit uh, unit less unit less quantity. Now Q10 is the factor. Usually coefficient is a factor. Okay, Q10 is the factor by which uh, the rate increases uh, when the temperature is raised by 10 degrees centigrade. Q10 represents uh, the factor by which uh, the rate uh, of uh, a reaction increases for every 10 degree rise in the temperature. Okay, rate means you know 0 to 10 rate 10 to 20 rate 20 to 30 like that okay now see van half rule also we call it as the, the rule that uh, the speed of chemical reactions okay that's what i told chemical reactions in the crop plants okay, is doubled at least for every or each 10 degrees centigrade rising temperature this rule is an approximation that what's best when temperatures approximate those conditions okay under which the reaction normally occurs here van Hoff's equation one most important thing in the in the other class i told about uh, uh, enthalpy okay enthalpy so agrometrologists we the agrometrologists must know the van Hoff rule or q10 rule with reference to enthalpy how okay the temperature dependence of uh, the equilibrium constant, the temperature dependence of equilibrium constant, okay? Temperature controls the equilibrium, exchange of gases, enzymatic reactions. Equilibrium is very important. Now, once again, the temperature dependence of the equilibrium constant to the enthalpy chain of a process. Enthalpy, I just, that's why I ask, I request you, to subscribe to my channel, Agrometrology Farmers and Rural, there I have elaborately told this example at that time. So, uh, with these things, uh, okay, uh, I just give a small introduction about the photoperiodism. 
what is the photo periodism the photo periodism is uh, a it is a plant response or capacity to response to respond to photo period okay photo periodism means you know a plant response a, yes particularly sorry plant it is a plant response or capacity to respond to photo period so what is a, a photo period you know, a phenomenon in which the visible part of the electromagnetic radiation influence the orientation of the shoots of a crop the photo periodism is of two types the positive and the negative when the shoots turn towards the light on incidence it is a positive photo periodism and the opposite is the negative photo periodism okay so what is the long day plants day a uh, short day plants also we should uh, learn here a plant which flowers uh, this is a flowering plant the plant in which flowering can be induced or enhanced induced or enhanced by long days the condition is that uh, the day should have more than at least 12 hours uh, of daylight for example barley potato all these things short day plant a plant in which flowering can be induced or enhanced by short days usually of less than 12 hours of day light for example rice soybean that is the crop i work for my okay uh, phd so during the photosynthesis water is oxidized and carbon dioxide is reduced that we know it photosynthesis consists of a combination of light requiring reactions that's what we call the light reactions and non light requiring reaction that's what we call the uh, night reactions so all reactions for the incorporation of co2 into organic materials finally finally and finally carbon dioxide is reduced to carbohydrates that's what okay so organic materials can occur in the dark uh, okay the reactions dependent on light uh, are those in which uh, the radiant energy is converted into chemical energy so photo periodism is this one so with this uh, I, I have um, completed some basics of uh, crop physiological concept basic concept in agricultural metrology thanking you very much we have got this year